In the last video, we talked about fitting data to what are called trigonometric polynomials that are sums of sine and cosine functions. In this video, we'll talk about developing trigonometric polynomials that exactly fit a data set. Recall that the Euler identities represent the sine and cosine functions as sums of complex exponentials. The discrete Fourier transform is a method of fitting data exactly using what's called Fourier interpolation. The objective is to find a trigonometric polynomial that exactly fits a set of data points. And this is derived using a discrete form of the continuous Fourier transform. The Fourier transform converts x as a function of t to x hat as a function of omega, where omega is a frequency. The inverse transform is a similar integral that converts x hat a function of omega back to the time space. The discrete form of the Fourier transform uses summations instead of integrals and converts each x value x sub n to an x hat value x sub k. The inverse transform is analogous. If we compare this to our trigonometric polynomial, the frequencies sigma j are now k omega. The x hat sub k values are equivalent to the weights ai and bi that are assigned to the sine and cosine functions for each frequency. Since we know all of the values of x sub n and we can choose values of omega, we can compute all of the x hat values from the sum. Once we know the x hat values, these are the a and b values, that is our trigonometric coefficients in the trigonometric polynomial. Computing the x hat k values from all of the x sub n, from sums over all of the x sub n, requires a large number of complex operations. Instead, we'll use what's called the fast Fourier transform, where the discrete Fourier transform requires approximately n squared complex operations. The fast Fourier transform requires n log base two of n operations. Here we'll introduce the sandy tukey algorithm, which requires that n be a whole number power of two. That is, n must be two, four, eight, 16, 32, something like that. To do this, we choose values of omega so that the frequency are whole number multiples of two pi divided by n. Then we call this exponential term w, where w just depends on the number of data points, n. Then we divide the length of the data in half. So we take a summation over the first n by two data points and an equivalent summation over the next n by two data points. This takes advantage of the fact that our frequencies are discretized as of two pi and all of the sine and cosine functions are two pi periodic. We can then re-index the second summation and combine the two summations. If we re-index the second summation so that it begins at n equals zero, instead of beginning at n equals n by two, then we just need to add this term to the exponent. Now that the summations are over the same index, they can be recombined and we factor out the additional e to the minus i pi k term from the second summation, which just takes a value of plus or minus one, depending on whether k is even or odd. So for all of the even values of k, there is a plus sign in the summation. And for all of the odd values of k, there is a minus sign in the summation. Next, we call the term in red here, y sub k, and the term in green in the second summation we call z sub k times wn, using the w that we already defined earlier. Now our original computation that was over n points requiring n squared operations is now two separate computations over n by two points, each requiring n by two squared operations. One n point calculation is decomposed to two n by two point calculations. Then we can continue this decomposition for each of the subsegments. If we do this decomposition for a system containing eight data points, x0 through x7, then the y hat k values come from the sum of x sub n and x sub n plus n by two. 
So y0 comes from the sum of x0 and x4. y1 comes from the sum of x1 and x5. And y2 comes from the sum of x2 and x6. Similarly, the z values come by taking differences. So z0 is w raised to the 0 power multiplied by x0 minus x4. z1 is w raised to the 1 power multiplied by the difference between x1 and x5, and so on. The values of y can be used to find x hat 0, x hat 2, x hat 4, x hat 6, etc. And the values of z can then be used to find x hat 1, x hat 3, x hat 5, and x hat 7, the odd ones. This is accomplished by, again, performing the decomposition of the y values and the decomposition of the z values using the same structure. Only now we have two separate data sets, each containing only four points. Those are decomposed to two data sets, each containing two points, which are subsequently decomposed to individual sets of data points. In the end, these give us our x hat values for all data points. MATLAB has a built-in function that performs the sand tukey fast Fourier transform called FFT. How do we use this for interpolating? First, we take the fast Fourier transform of all of the raw data. Remember, this converts our x data in the t space to x hat data in the omega space. Then we calculate as many data points as we want by taking the inverse transform. There's an example in your textbook of using the FFT function to extract out the coefficients of the Fourier interpolating polynomial. With respect to interpolation, in chapter 6 of the methods text, we've talked about the Lagrange polynomials, which use all of the n plus 1 data points to find an nth degree polynomial that goes through all of the data. The Newton divided difference polynomial accomplishes the same thing as the Lagrange interpolating polynomial, but is easier in the sense that we can add and remove data points from the data set because the polynomial is calculated recursively. Neither of these is particularly easy when you have a large number of data points. Instead, spline fit polynomials through pairs of adjacent points are frequently used to interpolate for large data sets. The most common implementation of splines is to use a cubic polynomial, which we call a cubic spline. Splines use separate polynomials between each pair of data points, but match both the data and the derivatives at each of the interior knots. More derivatives can be matched with higher order polynomials, but cubic splines are the ones that are most commonly used. While polynomial interpolation can be useful, we should keep in mind that polynomials have some limitations. One of the most important limitations is that polynomials are unbounded as the independent variable gets very positive or very negative. And all signals in real systems and all process variables are bounded. That is, they can't go to plus or minus infinity. So for this reason, Fourier interpolation has some advantages. Fourier interpolation fits data to trigonometric polynomials, which are sums of sine and cosine functions. The coefficients for the trigonometric polynomials can be found very rapidly using the fast Fourier transform. 